Andrew Bosworth, Chief Technology Officer at Meta did an AMA yesterday and it actually answered some of the things we talked about in yesterday's video. So I thought, let's throw it up here to give you all a chance to watch it yourselves and I think this will be a great one to see all your comments and thoughts below. And at that, I'll let Boz do his thing, unedited. Now I'm going to get some rest until WWDC. I'll see you on the other side. As with many other applications, Generative AI helps us close a gap in tooling. Today to create 3D assets, textures, um, to rig avatars, um, takes a tremendous amount of experience with a certain set of tools. Um, takes, you know, and to do it well can take years of training and experience. Um, and it is possible uh, that for the lay person, they will be able to relatively soon ask, uh, hey, make me uh, a house in the forest uh, with smoke coming out of the smoke sack and I can go inside the house. And it works. Will it be as good as what professionals do today? No, but it'll be uh, orders of magnitude better than they could have done on their own without tools like large language models. So I think we're going to see a real explosion in people's uh, ability to create and manipulate and, and invest in these immersive spaces. No, and I think this is an important distinction. Controllers will continue to be very important for a lot of experience that you have. We really want hands to be um, a native and a always available way for people to interact with things like the system UI. So when they put the headset on, um, they can easily get to where they want to go. And there's a lot of use cases for which people don't need to have controllers. If you're in a meeting, um, if you're watching media, being able to manipulate everything that you want with just your hands is a supernatural and intuitive way to do things. Then you pick up the controller when it's necessary for the experience that you have, just as we have for a long time in PC and console gaming and others. So I think both are going to continue to exist for a good long time. Uh, I love the idea of custom headbands. I think we've got an interface on the Quest 3 that is certainly one that is adaptable for people who are inclined to do such a thing, although I don't know of the plans to do that specifically. And of course, Oculus Link will continue to be a thing. We are committed to all of our PC gamers um, who want to continue to use this headset, which I think will be um, absolutely best in class uh, for all their PC gaming needs. I'm so glad to get a chance to clarify this because there has been a lot of speculation online about this. The Quest Pro does have a place for a depth camera um, and indeed it was pulled out relatively late in the development cycle. And the reason was we changed how we approached mixed reality to the Quest Pro once we tried it. We tried a couple different ways. One idea was to use the depth sensor and then colorize it with the color camera. The other one was to start with a, uh, the color image and then use the computer vision. And we just thought the second one was better. That meant that you could reduce cost, weight, and thermal uh, by pulling the depth sensor out um, without sacrificing anything in terms of the user experience we were providing, which we uh, feel good about what we did there. Um, and it would allows you to add hot mirrors to your infrared cameras, uh, which prevents things like uh, cloth in, uh, infrared transmissibility, which is always the thing that you're kind of mindful of when you have user accessible uh, information. So we felt really great about where we landed on mixed reality with Quest Pro. With Quest 3, we actually think we've, we've kind of, we've gone back to the original model and made that work better. So we're going to use that one. That's the facial interface, and I'm glad you noticed. One thing we tried to do with how we did our color schemes was to differentiate for people where the body of the headset was, which is significantly slimmer, and where the facial interface was, which is mostly governed by you know the distance between this part of our face and, and our noses. Um, so the black part is facial interface. It is roughly the same field of view. You sure can. No, and I think this is an important distinction. Controllers will continue to be very important for a lot of experience that you have. We really want hands to be um, a native and a always available way for people to interact with things like the system UI. So when they put the headset on, um, they can easily get to where they want to go. And there's a lot of use cases for which people don't need to have controllers. If you're in a meeting, um, if you're watching media, being able to manipulate everything that you want with just your hands is a supernatural and intuitive way to do things. Then you pick up the controller when it's necessary for the experience that you have, just as we have for a long time in PC and console gaming and others. So I think both are going to continue to exist for a good long time. Uh, we had dinner in Kyoto at Pantocho Miso Gigaya, and it was dynamite. Wow, actually we had so much good food in Japan. Not a surprise, this is a well understood thing, but really uh, my second favorite was just like like a chain of ramen that we, we had. Uh, so uh, maybe a little bit easy to please, but I don't know if we had a bad meal. It was all great, but that was my favorite. We have actually spent a lot of time on this. Um, first of all, you know, the, our operating system is an Android-based operating system. So you can take those uh, native applications, APKs, and, and compile them to work as applications 
in VR relatively easily, and some applications have done so. One challenge is the control scheme. You don't have a touch screen, and the degree to which you can simulate a touch screen with your controllers um, is a little bit limited. Um, that may change as hand-oriented operation gets more prevalent. Um, and we've even talked about getting more and more of these applications onto the device, but a lot of them don't totally make sense when they're built around the concept of being a mobile device. So um, if you have a device that you love, there's no reason that you couldn't potentially, or an application that you love, there's no reason you couldn't potentially uh, bring it in. Uh, if you work with a developer to do so, um, that's totally a possibility. We don't have a plan to do that like in mass scale. Hey, we gotta have a few things that we hold on to for Connect. <laughs> yeah, I really shouldn't sleep on this. Both Quest Pro and Quest 2 getting huge updates on their own soon uh, after kind of years of analyzing the real world workloads of these devices we've and, and kind of comparing that to how we do power management how we do management of the processor we've managed to unlock meaningful double digit percentage improvements um, in gpu performance and thermal performance um, for both which is coming to those headsets all quest 2 headsets and quest pro headsets in uh, an upcoming update pretty cool no, we did just announce a price drop for it and I expect it to be in the market for a while longer. For those who, the Quest 3 is not affordable at 499 base price, um, they will still be able to get into VR and, and a great VR headset that we're super proud of for Quest 2. So no, it'll continue. And by the way, Quest 1 still supported, still something we love and can try to try to do as much as we can with um, as many years as it's been in the market. So so no, this is we really have a commitment to continue to support these things for a long time. Uh, it will be pretty consistent with Quest 2. The Quest 3 is better in mixed reality, um, and the reason for that is we have two higher resolution color cameras on the Quest 3. Um, to, to my last answer, initially with the Quest Pro, we had this other vision of how we would colorize um, that we felt was okay, but it wasn't as good as what we ended up landing on there. Um, so Quest Pro still has great mixed reality, uh, still has great access to the Presence platform, but it will be slightly improved on Quest 3 from a Presence platform standpoint and dramatically improved in terms of the user experience of the clarity that you get uh, of your surroundings. It sure will. It does depend a little bit about what you care about. For the most part, I think the answer is gonna be yes. The Quest 3 um, has a lot more processing and thermal space than even the Quest Pro does, um, and still has a lot of the great features that we wanted to introduce, including things like mixed reality, which I think will be more important to a set of games that come in the future. Uh, having said that, if you are somebody who plays games um, in worlds where face and eye movement is really useful because you're playing cooperative games or you're playing in, in social spaces, um, the face and eye tracking that you get in the Quest Pro uh, might be the differentiating feature that you really need. I also personally love the open periphery design of the Quest Pro, um, so it really depends a little bit on your preferences, but I think the general answer is, is yeah, Quest 3 is uh, just going to be a tremendous headset for gamers. It is roughly the same weight, although it feels a great deal more comfortable. Uh, and we've done extensive user testing to confirm that. And some of that is improvements in the strap. A lot of that is the fact that the weight is held much closer in, which creates less downward pressure and you have a shorter lever arm. Uh, and so things like moment of inertia, when you turn your head, when you turn, take your head up and down, um, are much improved. So it is roughly the same weight, um, but the comfort is, I think, much improved. This is the question I've gotten the most frequently, and I love it. Um, so, the oh, going back to the original Oculus Touch controllers, the ring on the outside is covered in a constellation of LEDs in a specific pattern that allowed the computer vision on the inside-out headsets to track the controllers um, in space. And what we so the new controllers that we have still have uh, infrared LEDs on them. Uh, in a constellation that you can't see because you can't see infrared light, but the, that the cameras that we have on the headset can see. However, they also are gonna be in positions where many of those LEDs are occluded. Um, and so we have fused the computer version we were using for uh, constellation tracking with our hand models. Uh, so the hand tracking is also gonna kind of running at the same time. And so we have a model of your hand uh, and it tells us where the controller is in conjunction with all the tech tricks we've been using for a long time, using IMUs and smoothing to fill in gaps. They work really well. Well, the premise of this question is wrong. Project Aria is not, nor has it ever been planned for consumers. It is a research vehicle. Um, we do have a set of AR glasses that we have been developing for a long time, but I have nothing to announce today on that. The Quest Pro is our first work-optimized headset. You know, everything from how you do the donning and doffing, the fact that it's got a kind of tabletop charging station, um, the fact that it's got this open periphery so you can see your desk, see your keyboard, um, the mixed reality piece is one of the motivations there. 
Um, the eye tracking, the face tracking, those are optimized for meetings. You know, I spend a lot of time in workrooms meetings, and those make a huge difference in our ability to have really strong communication in those uh, conversations. Um, and of course, the pancake optics, which have a greater clarity, especially from edge to edge, relative to anything that came before. So it is our first work optimized headset, and it's still great. I love mine. <laughs>